Why is it that there is more access to mental health support now than there ever has been, yet mental health issues seem to be as high as they've ever been? Does going to therapy and endlessly talking about your problems help? Or does it actually make things worse? We're going to look to answer those questions in today's video with the help of Dr. JP Jordan Peterson. I'll be giving you my two cents, and it is just two, and I'll be giving you my five quick tips for better human health that don't involve going to therapy. Hello, my name is Jack. This is Unpack with Jack. And on this channel, we like to understand the human experience. Please do the YouTube things. Let's go. Self-referential statements of all kinds load with neuroticism. Okay, this is an unbelievably important discovery. They load so completely that the personality test used for assessing neuroticism, the, the most common one, the NEO-PIR, has self-consciousness as a subset of neuroticism. So that means there's no difference between being self-conscious and being depressed and anxious. They're, they're not linked, they're the same thing. So now you go to therapy, okay? And the half-wit therapist does nothing but make you self-conscious. I think ethically, therapists should have to disclose whether or not they are in fact a half-wit. So Jordan Peterson's talking about how they found this link between neuroticism, anxiety, depression, and self-consciousness, and how if you are a certain type of person prone to neuroticism and self-consciousness, then going to therapy and endlessly talking about your problems is not gonna help, apparently, according to science. You know, our whole notion of mental health is actually, it's, it's corrupt. And the reason for that is that we think mental health is mental. It's inside, it's subjective, right? And if you're healthy, it's because you're self-actualizing, right? And if you're unhappy, it's because the self isn't properly organized as an interior structure. But the problem with that is, it's just, it's actually not true. What human well-being is, is proper situation in a hierarchy that includes the social environment. And so what that implies is that the more you think about yourself, the less you're focusing on how to establish solid, reliable, and reciprocal social relations, right? An intimate relationship, friendship, the, the bonds of a family. And in the absence of all that, you concentrate on yourself. Well, not only you're miserable and depressed and anxious, you're also isolated, lonely, and insane. Isolated, lonely, and insane. Well, that's not what I went to therapy for. I would like a refund. That's a very interesting idea to me that mental health isn't just subjective, that there is kind of a universal guideline to good mental health. And this is something I've heard George Peterson talk about before, about situating yourself within a hierarchy where you have social supports and you have a meaningful relationship and you have a meaningful career or something to do during the day. And if you don't have those things, then maybe going to therapy and talking about your inner experience isn't going to help. It's going to make you more neurotic, more anxious, and maybe a full-witted therapist would focus on some external things as well, like setting some goals and talking about those things. Let's pause for a second. If you're enjoying this video, would you consider liking it and subscribing? Don't do it for me, do it for Eddie the Cat. He would very much appreciate your support. Back to the video. As like most things though, I think the answer lies in balance because certain people who might have traumas from the past that they haven't yet consciously acknowledged might really benefit from going to therapy and talking about that in a trusting environment where someone will just listen. On the other hand, people may need to do the exact opposite and they need to get out of their own heads and they need to go into the world and do stuff. So that brings us neatly on to my five tips for a better human experience that don't involve going to therapy. And number one is exercise. It's just so obvious, I know, but it really does help. You never don't feel good after you've exercised unless you pull a hamstring, in which case, yeah, you probably shouldn't have exercised. Number two, just do a little bit of research into processed food. Eating food that doesn't have a load of stuff in it that you can't pronounce really makes a big difference to everything. Number three, social supports. Do you have any friends? Do you have a significant relationship? And what are the barriers to those things? In times when I've got very isolated, it's really affected my mental health and it isn't really anything that's going on internally. It's just that we're social creatures and we need to be out in the world connecting with people. And when that gets taken away, as it did during the fucking pandemic for everybody, by the way. Oh, God, the bloody pandemic. <clears throat> Number four, purpose. Do we have a purpose? Do we have a, a reason to get up in the morning? Something to do, whether it's a career or taking care of family or just running some errands. Is there something that you can do with your day. 
a lot of people don't have that and it can really be damaging to one's mental health. And number five, <laughs> this one's a bit of fun and it is to have fun. It's really easy to forget that. I know life can be a drag sometimes and we've all got stuff that we need to deal with that isn't fun. Go and go and do a dance. Go and, I mean, I don't know. You know, you know what I mean. Allow yourself to have some fun. Things don't need to be as serious as they are. Well, that's my hot take, but what do you think? What do you think about therapy? Is it helpful? Is it not? Does it make things worse? Can you share your experience of therapy? Thank you very much for watching. I want to unpack that with Jack. I'll be right back. When you drink some water.